Okay, uh, hi there, Fran Brown here. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be going through the five uh, basic key elements you really need to know before you do the Brown Brown Bellagio's method. Um, these things do take a long time to actually become automatic, so don't worry about it. Um, take things slowly, build up gradually. Um, and this is really what I go through in my beginner's workshop. I run a beginner's workshop um, in between courses or before I start new courses. Um, so there will be one coming up shortly. Uh, the link is in um, the note above. You can always let me know if you'd like to come along. Um, so that's a two hour workshop. So I'm just gonna go through briefly uh, what we need to know. So five key points. The first one, um, is, is posture. Well, I could go on about posture for hours and hours and hours. Um, a lot of us these days are suffering with poor posture. Um, I'm seeing it even more these days in younger people um, because of, of the texting. Um, you know, you heard the, I suppose you've heard the new thing about the text net, which is going to be, I think, an issue moving forwards. Um, also, we, we sit a lot. We're not moving as much as we used to. So we, we've lost the use of our buttock muscles, which are very important for knee alignment, um, strengthening your back, of course, supporting your back, um, lots of things like this. So I am very, very, very focused in my classes on posture and redressing um, all these things that have gone wrong. Okay, so perfect posture. What is perfect posture? Well, um, I don't think any of us have got really perfect posture, but just to give an example, um, I've got my, my stick here. So if you were to look at somebody from the side, sideways on, perfect posture would be your ear in line with your shoulder, in line with your hip, knee uh, and ankle. So if I put this stick here, if you look at me from the side, um, oh, that's come off, sorry. Hopefully um, you can see that alignment there. I also call this three points of connection. So here is attached. If you think, if you think the shoulder blades are attached um, and the hips are attached here. So three points uh, of connection, very, very important. So what happens is um, if you haven't got this three points of connection, for example, um, your, your upper uh, back becomes rounded because of the, because of texting poor posture, um, the neck comes forward, if you can see, um, and I'm losing those three points of connection, and then the head can jump forward, you can problems with the neck, uh, and so forth. Also, if the upper back's too rounded, the lower back gets uh, flattened, um, and, and so we go on. So keeping that three points of connection there um, is vital. It's, it's you, you, you bring this into play pretty much in every exercise that we do. Um, in the class. Obviously, we're going to be doing a little bit later on about keeping those three points of connection when we actually go into movement, which is very important. Okay, so the other thing about posture, um, which is key, and you might not realise, is, is knee alignment. Um, so if you have a look down at your knees, try not to think about putting any muscles in or anything. Most people, um, or a lot of people I'm seeing these days, when they bend their knees, their knees are rolling in. Um, and obviously if you continue walking, moving with the knees in the wrong position, that can give you knee pain. There's not necessarily anything particularly wrong with the joint. It's just that you've lost the use of the buttock muscles, which of course um, determine your knee alignment. So I, I give my clients um, at the beginning of the course just a little exercise to do. So if you just stand there and sort of let your knees relax, you might find the knees roll in. If you squeeze the buttock muscles, then bend the knees, so you've got a little bit of tension in the leg, the knees actually are in the right position, which is level with the second or third toe. Um, so strong buttock muscles, again, very, very important. Uh, but the other thing I have to mention here with the three points of connection um, is the shoulder blade stabilization. Again, because of this more rounded position we, we, where some of us are adopting, the gap between the shoulder blades is too wide. So what we need to do, and what I do a lot in my classes, is to redress that by stabilising the shoulder blades, retracting the shoulder blades, stabilising uh, the shoulder blades for uh, our three points of connection for our neutral spine position. 
Um, so if you can see here, shoulder blades engaged, chin retracted, and then I'm all nicely aligned there, rather than if you let this happen, uh, when we, uh, the leaves roll in, you can see where problems um, come about. Okay, so that's that bit. Um, so neutral spine position, I'm sure everyone's, you've heard a lot about neutral spine position, what does that mean? So that means the most natural position for your spine or the, where it works properly. So if I put my hand here and the other one here, if I tuck under too much, that's sort of like too flat. If I push out the other way, that's hyperextended. Um, so what happens a lot these days if the back is hyperextended or even if we're too tucked under, um, you're losing that three points of connection. Uh, if, if you're too hyperextended, the lower back can compress, the vertebra compress, causing pain, sciatica, etc. So we have to find our neutral spine position. So if you go too much one way, too much the other way, somewhere in the middle, you should feel these lower abdominals uh, so engaging if you like starting to, to, to engage that is your your neutral spine position okay so think about posture ears shoulders hips all in line and finding knees slightly bent remember tension in the legs so the, the the knees don't roll in and then finding that neutral spine position where your abdominals starting to pull in so that's just sort of your key essential obviously we're not even moving yet um, we need to get moving Okay, so number three um, is the breathing, the Pilates breathing. Um, that helps you to focus and concentrate, which helps the Pilates relax, uh, relaxing as well. Um, now the breathing um, is important, I have to mention it, but I also have to say that it takes a long time to, to be able to get the breathing um, in the correct way and done in the same way that we're engaging the core doing the exercises. Okay, so um, in Pilates, we, we're using thoracic breathing, which means we breathe in through here, the, 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 the thorax, um, or the rib cage, and that is where your lungs are. Um, so we're not uh, breathing in through here, we're not breathing in through the top of the chest, that creates tension. Um, we're breathing in through the rib cage. So if you place your hands here um, on your rib cage, I want you to breathe in, and we breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. So breathe in through the nose, find um, your rib cage, and it expands sideways as you breathe in. You're going to breathe out through the mouth, and then the rib cage closes. Okay, breathing in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. And as, as you breathe out, you close the rib cage. That's where we start to engage the core a little bit more. So um, that's my next key point. Um, Number four is engaging the core while doing all those other things. So um, in Pilates, we work, obviously work with lots of muscles, but the main Pilates muscle is called the transverse abdominus. Um, it inserts in the pelvic floor, it comes all the way up here, wraps around you and inserts into your back, into your thoracic spine. So by engaging this transverse abdominal muscle or your Pilates muscle, by drawing the abdominals in, we're also strengthening uh, the back. So that's how it all connects. And obviously you're doing that in every exercise. Um, but the key points are, of course, you must make sure you've got your three points of connection, your shoulder blades are back and down, everything like that as well. Okay, so we're gonna put all that together to engage the core. So checking you've got your neutral spine position. I want you to squeeze the pelvic floor muscles first. Now, when you squeeze the pelvic floor muscles, remember that's where your transversus abdominis activates, you should feel the buttock muscles engaging. Um, and again, that helps with your, your knee alignment there. Um, guys, you have got pelvic floor muscles, so don't think you haven't, it's not a woman thing. Um, so squeeze the pelvic floor muscles, you'll feel um, buttock muscles engaging and a little bit, probably a little bit of abdominals in there if you've got your neutral spine position. Okay, then we're going to breathe in through the nose, rib cage expanding. Breathe out through the mouth, rib cage closing, and that's when we draw the abdominals in. So think of your tummy button going through to your spine. So what you can do actually is to put your hand here, uh, pelvic floor, breathing in through the nose, rib cage expanding. Breathe out through the mouth, rib cage closing, and then drawing those abdominals in, trying to feel your core connection front to back, which is strengthens your back. That this is what core strength means or core engagement. So that's sort of it in a nutshell, but of course we haven't done any movement yet. 
we have to bring this into when we actually move. Um, so to give you a little bit of example, standing, and then I'm gonna go down onto, onto the mat. Um, squatting is a very, very good exercise. Um, you know, if we go in, into our squatting, we need to keep our three points of connection, our core muscles engaged. Um, for example, as well, if we were going to pick up something, we want to make sure um, this isn't happening. We're not losing that, that core engagement because that's when you can injure yourself. Repeated movement, straining the low back, um, problems later on. So if we were going to do um, a squatting exercise or even a picking up off the floor, we need to be standing, three points of connection, breathe in, breathe out, abdominals in. Now we need to hip the hip, hinge the hips backwards rather than rolling down like that. So we hinge back and that's how we should pick something up. And in fact, that's how we do our squatting exercise. So can you see, I've still got that core engagement. I will go over squatting techniques um, in, a, in another video clip because it's very, very important. Um, also watching the knee alignment, so you make sure the knees don't roll in, so knees stay where they are. You hinge back from the hips, shoulder blades back and down, and then we're going down into our squatting or even picking something up, keeping the strain off the lower back and obviously keeping the knee alignment in place. Okay, so finally I'm going to get down on the mat. And if you had trouble, um, or it's very difficult finding your neutral spine position standing, um, it's actually a lot easier to find it here um, on the mat. So if you place your fingertips underneath the small of your back, Okay, if the fingers go all the way under, you're actually too arched. You haven't got your neutral spine position. So you need to adjust um, your, your spine there. So when you push the fingers underneath the small of the back, the fingers get stuck. Okay, you've got to go under a little bit, the fingers get stuck, and that's your neutral spine position. Um, and you need the chin. If you make a fist placed underneath your chin, there should be no gap there. So we've got basically got our three points of connection there. Um, if you do find you're very rounded um, in the neck and you find it difficult to get your neutral spine position lying down, um, I recommend you get a cushion uh, or one of these that falls and you put it at the back of the head and it helps you get your shoulder blades back and down and you'll find that getting that neutral spine position is a lot easier. Okay, so engaging the core in this position Pelvic floor first, breathing in through the nose, rib cage expanding. Breathe out through the mouth, rib cage closing, drawing those abdominals in, so now you should feel those core muscles connected. And then from there, in Pilates, we then learn how to move. For example, we might move a leg out, but making sure we're not letting the spine come out of neutral, and that's how you're strengthening your core, strengthening your whole body in your neutral spine position, in the way your posture should be. And then we might add in an arm as well. It's a bit more of a challenge to keep that neutral spine position. Breathing in, breathing out. So every time when we breathe out, we're drawing the core muscles in. So you can see how we're strengthening actually the whole body by the nature um, of the breathing and the core engagement. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, obviously it's just a very, very short video. Um, explaining it all, it's um, I, I do this, uh, explain it in a lot more detail in my beginner's workshop, which is two hours long. Um, I've got one coming up shortly. Okay, any, any questions, of course, just leave a comment below. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck with learning your Pilates basics. Thanks very much.